Hello, my name is Agurk. Welcome to episode 13 of Stranded Deep, a tutorial on how to survive and even thrive in Stranded Deep. What we're going to do in this episode is take a look at experimental version 0.52 of Stranded Deep. I've loaded that up, moved my save over to this version of the game, and we're going to go through the developer notes on the bug fixes and changes that they've made to the game. And then we'll just see what we have time for. But first we're going to look at the actual developer notes from build 0.52. So I have those on screen. So bug fixes. Basically they have fixed the cartographer tooltips not showing. And I'll actually show that a little bit later in the episode. I have a little bit more with the cartographer I want to talk about. They fixed the crafting menu tool tips not showing. Now those we can take a look at if we look at the crafting menu. You can see they've done a few changes to the crafting menu over here. You can see that the, uh, the lettering down here now shows up in red if you do not have the item in your inventory or if it's not on the ground in front of you. Uh, whereas if you do have it in your inventory, like the axe here, for example, I have a crude axe in my inventory, so it shows up as white. And when you hover over items, the name of that item appears right below it or right next to it. Whereas in the previous version, 0.51 stable, it showed up way over here on the left, which was a little confusing at times. So they've moved it back to where it should be. So that's nice. Next thing they've done, they fixed the audio sources playing outside of their range. Now what that is, is things like the water still and the fire. In the last version of the game, you could hear this drip, 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 no matter where you were on the island, even when you were underwater. And it was the same with the fire. You could hear the fire no matter where you were. And I'm going to light this up just to demonstrate it because it's a little bit easier to hear it with the fire than it is with the water still. So in the previous version, we would hear this fire crackling away no matter where we were on the island and even when we were underwater. If I move just this far away, no fire sounds. Move closer, we can hear the fire. Fades away, fades in. So that's great. I love that they fixed that. It was so annoying to constantly hear that before. You'd be out in the water fishing and you'd hear the fire crackling away. It was really annoying. And here, nothing but music and underwater noises. So that's great. All right, the next thing, fixed rafts not ejecting passengers when overturned. Yeah, I had that happen to me once. Uh, <laughs> if you saw my blooper reel, it's not in this uh, series, but it was filmed between episode three and four, I think it was. So if you look into my video list, you can find the blooper reel. And on there was an example of being caught underneath a raft when it was overturned. And you just, you couldn't get out. It, it was really frustrating. But it was funny. So uh, <laughs> I, if you haven't seen that episode, go back and watch it. It was a good one. All right, the next one. Fixed rafts allowing operation whilst in the water. I'm not really sure what that is. If anyone knows what they mean by that, let me know in the comments below because I been racking my brain and I can't really figure out what that is. The next one. Fixed fire torch breaking game interaction when crafted. Yeah, that was totally glitched. Every time you created a fire torch, you could no longer use the E button, which is, of course, extremely important in this game. Couldn't pick up things, couldn't uh, light the fire, couldn't do anything. Couldn't even save the games. You basically had to just shut it down and lose your save progress and then come back in again. Okay, so that has been fixed now, but I'll go over that and cover it in more detail a little bit later in this video. 
Next items, fixed sharks fleeing behavior, not working correctly. I'm not really sure what that is. Um, I think sharks are supposed to kind of run away or swim away when you uh, stick them a couple of times with a spear, but I'm not entirely sure what exactly that entails, but I'll check it out, I guess, next time I attack a shark. Fixed sharks movement jitteriness in shallow water. Yeah, that was something that they needed to fix, so I'm glad they've done that. If you remember in, in earlier videos when I was attacking sharks, if the shark came in close to shore, it would kind of glitch out and get all jumpy and jittery as it was interacting with the uh, plant life probably on the bottom of the ocean because it was too shallow. So that's, that's good. I'm glad they fixed that. Fixed corals spawning above the ocean water level. I've seen some coral sticking up above the water, but I don't know. That's usually only when there's a lot of waves and stuff because the water level rises and, and falls with the uh, troughs between the waves. But whether that was really a problem, I don't know. But if it was, they fixed it, so cool. Changes. Next thing. Changes they've made to the game. Reduced tiger shark aggression by 40%. That's a lot. Now, I didn't think tiger sharks were that bad. I mean, they're tiger sharks. They're, you know, they're, they're the meanest thing in this game. So I thought it was appropriate that they were aggressive. But apparently they've reduced that by 40%. They're going to be way too easy to kill if that's the case. I don't know. We'll see. I'll reserve judgment on that one until I've tried to kill a few sharks. Reduce the great white shark aggression by 30%. Okay, great whites we don't see that often in the game, so again, with a great white you'd expect them to be aggressive, so I don't know. Changed food names to only display one prefix for cooking, smoked, and spoiled. Now I can demonstrate that because I do have some smoked meat right here. Now previously when you cooked it, it would say cooked small meat. And then when it became smoked, it would be called smoked cooked small meat. So now they've just removed the name Cooks once it becomes smoked. So that's fair enough. I don't know why the prefix spoiled would be relevant in any way because you can't have cooked spoiled or smoked spoiled. So I'm not really sure why they thought that was worth mentioning, but okay. The next four I'll just lump together because they are related, I guess. They've changed the spawn rate of lionfish, sea snakes, reef sharks, and stingrays to make them all spawn less frequently or more rarely. So that's great. I thought there was way too many sea snakes, way too many lionfish. The reef sharks, ah, uh, they're okay. They're decoration. They don't do anything to you, but the poisonous ones, I just thought there was way too many of them. You always had to be wary underwater when you were swimming that you didn't accidentally swim into a sea snake or a lionfish because there were so many of them. So if they're less common now, I think that's great. Uh, if you need the lionfish to make shark repellents, there should be still plenty enough lionfish for you to do that. So I don't see that as a problem. And then finally, the last thing they have on here is new content. They have added a new ability to pin a crafting combination to the screen. That's interesting. You can take any of the recipes over here and you can... Actually, let me just uh, point, say roughly about there. Now, I did that because I want the top left of the screen here to be clear and not uh, have some busy background. So basically, if you take any recipe, and if we take something simple like a lashing, if I right click on the lashing, you can see the recipe comes over to the left here and sticks to the top of the screen. So I can now move around and do stuff, and that recipe is gonna stay there. And it won't go away until I actually remove it or until I craft something. So if I look at the fibrous leaves here, you can see that the lettering on it became white which means I can now craft it. And as soon as I craft it, the pinned recipe disappears. Now I did find a glitch with this when I was testing it. If I pin the stone tool on the top left, 
You can see the one X is in red, which means I don't have it. So even when I look down at these, I should be able to craft a stone tool and I can't unless I actually pick up a rock and now it becomes white and I can craft the stone tool. So that looks like they still have a bug or two with that, but it's a neat little trick or a neat little addition to the game, in my opinion, especially when you're a, a newer player and you get some of these recipes that are extremely complicated. Like say you want to build a water still, right click on the water still and all of the ingredients are right there on the screen. You can run around. Maybe you have to go and collect some rocks or chop down a palm tree. So that recipe is right there on the top of the screen available for you to uh, check to make sure you have everything. And as you collect everything, it then ticks it off and changes it to white. So I have too much stuff here. I'm just going to grab a tarp. So you can see that now all I need is a palm frond and a coconut flask. Now I'm not going to actually build another one, so I'm just going to drop these back again. But you get the idea of how that actually works. Now to get rid of it, you either craft that item or you go back and right click on it in your crafting menu again. So that's kind of a neat little addition. I like that. I like that a lot actually. And yeah, so that was it. That was all there is in the new experimental build. All right, so I want to look at the fire torch. So I've gathered a bunch of resources and I have what I need. I have cloths and sticks. So I want to build a fire torch or several fire torches even. And this is what it looks like. Now I'm just gonna put it in my inventory and craft a couple more of them. do say four to start with and then what I want to do is also uh, we'll get to those in a second so I need to come over here start up our fire we don't have a lot of fuel here but I just need to get my torches lit I'll add a couple of uh, fibrous leaves just to keep the fire going so I don't want to use the sticks in the fire all right, so what you do is once you have crafted your fire torch, you just hold it up to the fire, and as it says on screen, hold E to ignite it. And voila, there is your fire torch. Now, I'm going to replace these lanterns. And place the fire torch there. I don't know if you can actually light this with another fire torch. Nope, doesn't look like it. Now you can see that the fire torch doesn't actually render from a distance, so you have to wait till you're fairly close to it before you can actually see it. That's the only kind of negative with that. So I think what I'll do is I'll put a few of them up here, and I'm going to build some hooks. And attach the torches on here. Wow. So you can actually see the glow from the fire torch but you can't see the actual fire until you're closer. <laughs> Funny, they need to fix that. All right, hook, put another one here. And we'll go light this one. And as I mentioned in the last episode, these fire torches are a resource that gets used so that you can only keep them going for a while and then they'll burn out. I'm just going to turn off this light so you can see just what the glow of the fire torch looks like. I think maybe we'll put one in here. I'll take, take come on, take it. Thank you. Now you can also take these with you as you run around the island and I'll just quickly do that over here so you can see what it's like. Gives a really kind of a neat effect, I think. Makes you feel like you're exploring an island more so than using a lantern or a flashlight. OK, 
Careful you don't light things on fire. There you go. Yeah, so I mean, it gives a really nice warm glow. Makes it feel like you're camping or that you really are on a deserted island somewhere. The uh, light from the lanterns is, is a bit harsher. It's more white light. But yeah, and these will keep burning. I think it's for 12 hours. So basically through the night and then they will burn out. So you do have to craft new ones all the time if you use them. But yeah, it gives you a really nice glowy look to them compared to this over here, which is a white light. White light, glowy light. White light, glowy light. <laughs> and again, to make these, you just need some fibrous leaves and you need a loom and you need to be able to craft cloth and you have to have a stick and then one cloth, one stick produces a fire torch. All right, so that was it for this evening. I'm going to uh, go to bed. I'll wake up in the morning. I'm gonna turn my little torch off so I don't uh, use them up. This is one thing you have to do with torches. If you're going to sleep, you might as well turn your torches off and save the fuel. And I will see you in the morning. Okay, so I'm going to look at one of the first items that was in the developer notes for version 52 experimental, and that was a change they had made in the cartographer. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about the cartographer, but we'll take a look at this first. This is the new version. And I don't like it, personally. I think the colors that they've changed it to are way too harsh. Black, white, and red. Mm, I'm just not thrilled with that. I much preferred it when it was in this color scheme, which is gray with white. It's a bit easier on the eyes, and even the red stands out quite nicely against it. So, not really sure why they changed it to black. But, yeah, what can you do? So what they changed in here was the name of the island coming up when you hover over the island. In the previous version in 51 or 0.51, it did not come up with the uh, info when you hovered over an island. And as you can see here, this is Great Tropical Island. Let me pick one a little further in here. We'll take our starter island. Lower forgotten corner, author, beam team, description, a procedurally generated random map zone, version 0.0. And it's version zero because it's dynamically created by the game. It didn't exist before we started the game. Uh, yeah. And if you look at the skull here, it now comes up with which mission this is. And I don't think it even did that in the earlier versions. I don't think it told you what mission it was. It just said mission, but it didn't say whether it was the eel or the squid or the shark, but now you can see exactly which mission it is, so you know what you're getting into before you go to that boss fight, which is a good thing, I guess. Now, with the custom island, if we look at this one, this is the island that we're currently on, and it's called Forsaken Island. The author is Dangly Bits. <laughs> That's my Steam name. Description. The island has been inhabited at different times over the millennia, but is now deserted. Mystery. Intrigue. Fear. Or is this your new home? Version 29. So the version number is basically how many times I've had to save the game after editing it. So yeah, 29 times I've been into the in-game uh, editor and I've adjusted the island. And that's something you have to do a lot when you create an island. There's so many details that you have to get uh, adjusted and corrected and fixed. You're never going to get it right the first time. Um, I think the best one I ever did was probably Driftwood Island here. I've only edited it twice. So this was one of the newest islands I've created. And it's just a small little island with basically a sandbar and a bunch of driftwood on it. And there's a few trees and, and rocks and things on this other island. Uh, not too complicated, but as you use the in-game editor, you get better at it and uh, you make fewer mistakes. So yeah, it is what it is. One other thing I wanted to talk about with the cartographer is 
something that I don't think I talked about in episode four when we were talking about these. And that is the fact that this map is angled. If you look at the direction indicator here, north is that way. So we're actually due north of our start island. And I believe that's one of the reasons why it's so confusing traveling around in this game in your raft. It's so easy to get lost because you figure the closest islands to you would be the ones that are directly north, west, east, and south. But that's not the case because north is actually that island and south is actually that island. And west is actually a skull, Mission Eel, and east is actually there. So when you're traveling to the nearest island to where you are, you're actually going either northeast or northwest, southwest, southeast, or northeast. So it's very confusing. Uh, I don't know why they didn't just make north up and south down and west to the left and east to the right. I mean, that's what you would think would be the most logical thing to do. Now, the only reason I can think of as to why they have done it this way is because we're supposed to be somewhere in the Pacific Ocean and magnetic north from the middle of the Pacific Ocean would probably actually be in that general direction because magnetic north sits in northern Canada somewhere close to Greenland. So from the Pacific, north is actually that way. So maybe that's why they've done it. I don't know. I'm just guessing. They've either done it for that reason or they're just trying to be evil. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, and we have a whale. Wow, this is great. I hardly ever see whales during the daytime. It's almost always nighttime that I see whales. So I would love to see this guy up close and personal. Ooh, he's underneath our raft. Hello. Don't spout on me. Too cool. Now whales can't hurt you, so that's great. I mean, look at that. That's fantastic. Don't deep dive, buddy. Stay where I can see you. <laughs> Ah, look at him. <laughs> How's that for up close and personal with a whale? Nice. Woo. Oh, my raft. Oh, dear. Swim back to the raft. Well, we got kind of far away from our raft. Oh no, I'm in the middle of the ocean. I hope there's no sharks. Wait for me. We're getting there. I think we'll be good. <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Oh, please just don't spawn a great white at this time. Don't even look. Just go. Swim. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. That uh, whale is probably going to be gone, though, by the time I get back to the raft. We'll see. Come on. Get back there, buddy. Now, why I came out here, I was looking to sail over to the end of the world and to show you what that looked like. So let's uh, motor ahead. I think the whale is gone, but I'll, I'll just go over here, see if I can see him again, but he's probably gone.
Ooh. Oh, shit. Oh, that was his tail. We just sailed right through his tail. Holy crap. Look at the size of this guy. Holy crap, he's huge. Nice. <laughs> Look at this guy. Beautiful. Are you curious about us? Yes, I'm sure you are. Nice. Get up. Don't fall down. Let's uh, sail a little bit closer again. Sun's going down. The whale is right there. <laughs> I love whales. And it's just going to hang around here. This is what's so cool about whale encounters in this game. If you can get close to one, they tend to like to hang around and just kind of look at you and do stuff like that. Now this one's actually pretty passive. I've had one that was rolling around and waving his flippers in the air and his tail in the air and everything. This guy hasn't really done that yet. Oh, here we go. Now he's gonna do it. Here comes the flipper. Oh, right through my boat. Oh, such a cutie. So cool. So look him in the eye. Hello. Where's your eye? There it is. Too cool. I love it when they roll over like that. Oh, we lost him. I think he despawned. Oh, there he is again. Oh, there he is. Eh, go back. Okay, so this episode ran a little longer than I had intended. Uh, I was going to do a lot more, but I think what I'll do instead is I'm going to stop this episode here. And then in the next episode, which will likely be our last episode in this series, I'm going to go over the future of the game. What the developers have planned. What I would like to see them do to the game. Suggest a couple of improvements. And yeah go from there and that'll round out our series and then we'll see what we do from there. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Leave a like or a comment below and we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.